today is the 24th of September 2014. The place I'm standing on 100 years ago was a terrible place to be. You can see in front of me is a board. Uh, please forgive my pronunciation, but I'm at Massigues in France and I'm standing on Hill 191. Almost exactly a hundred years ago, the German armies advancing from my right over there met the French armies advancing from my left, met on this hill, this very spot. In front of me there is the memorial to these very events. And to the many soldiers, both French and German, that died on this very spot. What makes this place so special is that right in front of me now, the summit of the hill, which was the scene of terrible fighting, has had a lot of archaeological excavations done over the last couple of years. And I believe that uh, even still today, they found, I believe it's nine bodies, the remains of French and German soldiers that were buried here at the time. This in front of me are two craters overlapping, German front lines on my left, French on the right. See the barbed wire there. This hill was so important to both sides because of the observations it for afforded over the surrounding countryside. You can see right across that way the direction the Germans were coming from. And they met on this hill almost exactly 100 years ago to the day. Dug in on the summit and they were actually only fighting on top of here for about five months because in early 1915 the French were pushed back by the Germans down to the bottom of the hill to the village itself and they stayed there for several years. Later on the French retook the hill I believe in 1917 and the Germans were pushed back to the other side of the hill so this hill ch exchanged hands several times, but for a period of five months, the two opposing sides here were some 50 yards apart, separated by the crater, which was detonated by the French. And I'm going to take you on a tour now around the restored trenches. Firstly, over onto the French side. I'm above ground at the moment see a wonderful view over there. There's the French flag, which of course wouldn't have been there at the time. That's there to mark this spot as being hallowed ground to the French. To my left there you can see the crater. The German front line is that barbed wire on the other lip of the crater. The French front line here on this side of the crater. You can see the trenches running along here. We're now going to enter that trench. You have to excuse my snuffles. I think I've got the makings of a cold coming on. Not sure what it says, but it says I'm responsible for something. And there's video surveillance. This was originally a German trench. 25th of September 1915 and it's now 24th of September 2014. 23rd Colonial. And it was the first French line in September to October 1915. And here we go, we head to the restored trenches now. It's a big roll of rusted barbed wire up there. That part there has not been fully restored yet. I've visited most of the Western Front. This is the one place on the entire Western Front that I've, yet, that I've so far discovered that gives you the best impression of what life for the average soldier was like on the Western Front. You see through this little slit here, which is a, this is a rifle bay. The view, I can just see the German wire. I can see the French wire there. 
I can see the German wire in the distance on the other, lip, other side of the crater. <coughs> of course, in daylight, you'd never show your head above ground. Picture, typical picture of French infantry in the trenches having his lunch. This here is a typical French water bottle, French infantry issued water bottle. Rusted away of course. And this is another fire bay. Um, this is a restored one of course. But at the side of the trench is here, cooking pots. And this, shrapnel. Imagine this a piece of iron like this from a bursting shell travelling at thousands of feet per second the human body would not stop it. It would slice right through you. A piece of shrapnel like that hitting you, you're a goner. Again, more cooking pots and a water bottle. Unfortunate that the weather's okay, although there's a bit of moisture in the trench, it's not too bad. Of course, over the winter months, trenches like this could become terrible places to live in. see down here, items have been found, wine bottles, the French infantry were actually issued with wine. Cooking pots, another fire bay. This uh, wattle is very typical of holding up the sides of the trench. You can see from that picture, French infantry with his rifle next to him with that typical wattle to try and hold up the sides of the trench. And again, we've got these little slits to look through. And I can see through there, again, the German wire on the other side of the trench. Uh, the other side of the crater, sorry. This is what we call the sap. It's a, a short trench extending out in front of the main trench. And there's a, a loophole in an armoured place, possibly for a sniper. some French infantry. Another sat with the the one thing that all soldiers in the trenches would have dreaded, the ladder for leaving the trench. And no one of course in daylight would ever want to do that. Covered area here where believe it or not a, a shelf like this would be someone's bed. This is where people lived and slept for weeks, months on end. And we have a dugout, a small storage place, several rusted water bottles, a pick, a pick as well, wine, even the soles of boots there, with the hobnails in them. We've got a choice of which way to go. I'll stay with this way to the left because this is the front line. That way branches off somewhere. You can see on top of the trench, the piece of metal with the loops in, that was known as a screw picket. The bottom of that in the ground is a spiral, and they would screw it into the ground to hang the barbed wire on. Very typical on the British front as well. The first part of the war, they'd use wooden stakes and hammer them into the ground, but of course, hammering makes a noise, and if you're out in no man's land, in the middle of the night, you don't want to make noise. So the screw picket was invented to hang the barbed wire. A dugout here that looks like it's collapsed and clearly too dangerous to be excavated. But look at the width of the trench. Not to live in this. Again, just on the side, uh, looks like a, a tin, some rations, and more and more shrapnel. That is so sharp. Just picking it up. I could cut myself on that. But imagine that lump of shrapnel hitting someone. It doesn't bear thinking about. Some 60% of casualties in the First World War were actually caused by artillery fire, which was the majority of them. Here on the ground we have uh, a brazier, tin with holes in to light a fire, 
and, and to heat some food up. We've got another branch in the trench. That's a sap, again going forward. Out in front of the main front line. There's another screw picket and lots of barbed wire everywhere. Barbed wire. We'll go this way. It's getting a bit shallow here now. So as you imagine that this isn't quite as deep as it would have been. In fact, we're coming out. And look at that in front of me. That's one big shell. I'm going to have to find a way back into the trenches. But I'll just stand on top of this hill now next to this screw picket. So you can see the extent of the excavations here. French trenches going across there in front of me. As I say, this hill was in shared hands from, for about five months. And over this last couple of years, huge amount of work done here, excavating, bringing it back to some semblance of what it would have been like at the time if you'd simply removed all the people, removed all the artillery fire, removed the danger. See if we can find a way back in. You can see just ahead of me, over there, there's a red cross, that's a, fir a first aid dressing post. And we'll go around there a bit later and have a look at with an entrance back into the trenches. I took the wrong turning earlier. Now look down there to my right. There's a dugout. It's a real torch actually. There's in quite a way. And that would have been home for people. Down there, there's cooking pots and again the French bottles of wine. That would have been someone's home. Look at that. Lucky didn't bring that. This is 1915. We're in the German part now. God, it must be confusing at times. And look how this is cut into the rock. Very, very narrow. But if you've got shrapnel bursting in the air, this is where you want to be undercover. Now, if you look above me here, that is an old part of an old railway line. And that's quite common. To see railway lines, railway track used to reinforce the roofs of dugouts. And down there on the ground, another underground dugout that people lived in. Choice. Down to the right here, another dugout. Since it's, uh, since German 1915. As I can see down there, I don't know if to come out on the field, but I can see what looks like bunk beds. Several steps going down, it goes down a good six foot, eight foot in depth. Cut out of the rock. Typical dugout. September 14, 100 years ago. It was first French, then it was German, then French again. If my ability to translate that is accurate. Look at all this at the side. That is an old remains, the metal remains of a rifle. You can see the bolt action, the breech, the magazine would be, is there. It's probably a French label. bit of a bend in it. I wouldn't like to try firing that one. This is, looks like the fuse off a shell or a French mortar or something. Spades, mess tins, water bottles. Which way now? I'm lost. Let's go this way. Oh, that's quite heavy. That's uh, part of a shell. Looks like the stuff's been removed, hopefully, so it's not dangerous. Shrapnel everywhere. Water bottle just stuck at the side. And look at this rifle here, another one. 
on this one the breach is closed that means there's probably a very good chance there's a round in there but look at the barrel bent of course all the woodwork has rotted away in the last hundred years now here you can see from the picture in fact you actually excuse me I'm going to sneeze I think oh, you can see a shallow grave and the remains that were found in March 2012 a photograph an, un an unidentified colonial infantry French colonial infantry was found here it was quite typical at the time when someone was killed it, you couldn't go out of the trenches to bury them so they'd often bury them in the floor of the trench or in the sides of the trench it's very common to find bodies in the sides of the trench and another one here as you can see another in March 2012 two and a half years ago another French soldier found and the trenches here have not been fully excavated or restored you can see from this picture typical of the time bodies all over the place too dangerous to the living to try and see to the dead Rains of shells and more shrapnel I mean that, that is quite weighty it's like an axe Look at the edge on it. Again, you've got to imagine that's from an exploding shell. It would explode in the air if it was air burst, or a contact shell explode on the ground, but the shrapnel shell was intended to explode in the air, and that would come flying round everywhere. Oops. And you can see from this one, that's the, you can still see the shape of the shell. And that's look the shrapnel flying at thousands of feet per second no human body could withstand anything like that a small dugout picture again of a couple of typical looks like a winter scene because they're dressed up in sheepskins it looks like there's snow on the ground French, the second line, German second line, from February 15 to September 15. As I believe, if my history is correct, that the Germans pushed the French off here at some point and took possession of the entire hill. Everywhere you look, shrapnel and remains. Remains are two stretchers. So this could very well have been uh, a field dressing station. Tons of shrapnel everywhere you look. And another fire step. soldier found here in May 2013. Only last year. And yet another. Colonial infantry. turn around and go back. I'm not sure where I'm going end, to end up down there. goes on for another couple of hundred yards that way. In fact, you can see in front of me now with the trench they stopped excavating there. I'm going to go above ground now, which of course, 100 years ago, I could not do this. This would be entirely impossible 100 years ago. Ah, oh, there's the French flag. Gives me a sense of direction where I am. I've almost walked off the edge of the site. But to stand here in daylight 100 years ago was to commit suicide. It's as simple as that. Shell hole after shell hole. There's 
a bit dug out to give you an to show you what it would have been like in no man's land. Just overlapping shell holes. And we're very fortunate because of the chalky soil, these are very dry. In fact, you can see in the bottom of this shell hole, the bottom end of a screw picket that I spoke to you about earlier. There's dozens of those all over the place. Millions would have been used during the war. Shell hole after shell hole. And fortunately, because of where we are on top of a hill, they're dry, but in many places these shell holes were in full of water and worse, bodies, human remains. These are shells. The, uh, the brass fuses, the fuse caps have been taken off all of them, but these are shells that have been fired. Huge lump of shrapnel there. My god, that's from a big shell. And you can see ahead of me now, that's looking in the direction the Germans advanced from. So it's very important to the Germans, the French did not hold the summit of this hill. Because the view they would have over the German rear areas for artillery spotting would have been fantastic for the French. So all hills were of great strategic importance. Something's going on down here. 1916 to 18. An observation. And the lines, it looks look like something to observe over the lines of the Germans. You see there's a tunnel down there. I'm not going to go down it. I forgot to bring a torch with me. It was down into the ground. And over here you can see where they're still excavating. Whoever is responsible for this, I have to give them a tremendous credit for restoring a section of the Western Front to give us a better idea as to what it would have been like living under these terrible conditions. Everywhere else that I visited, and I visited everywhere right from Newport to the Swiss border, virtually everywhere almost seems sanitised in the sense it's green, there's grass, the trenches are only half the depth they would have been originally, or in some cases even less. Here they found a German, an unidentified German soldier. Nineteen fifteen. Nice little home. Home from home. More shells and one or two with the fuses on. But, uh, and here we have the grave of an identified French soldier, Albert de Dour, 21 years old, recruited in Cherbourg, 21st Regiment of Infantry. February 1915. His body was found in July last year, 2013. Uh, little dugouts like this by the British were called fog holes, little cutouts in the side of trenches uh, where they would sleep. You can see in the large shell on the right little shrapnel balls, like ball bearings. As a shell exploded, those balls would just shoot out all over the place. Now, up here is an observation point that looks over the German lines. In there and going up, we have uh, a surveillance slot looking out over the German lines. This is from later on in the war when the French retook the hill. A little bit 
bits of uh, railway line that have been cut up and used to reinforce, usually for the reinforcing the roofs of dugouts. There's the flag ahead of me again. So let's see where we're going. Again, huge amounts of shrapnel. Whoever is responsible for this site or whoever owns it, I hope they get support from uh, the French government to look after it and to continue their excavation because it's incredibly important for our understanding of what it would have been like living under these conditions. It's also very important that visitors such as myself respect that this is not just a battlefield, it's still a graveyard. There are still bodies within these walls, these trenches, and we must respect that. And remember also not to remove anything. Collectors would have a field day here, but we must show respect to those that were here a hundred years ago by not removing any of their artefacts. Even little things like that. That's a rifle cartridge that's been fired. I can see in the percussion cap the indentation. I haven't got my glasses on so I can't read it. But it's a rifle cartridge and we must always leave things where we found them. Trench of the first French line from 14th of September 14 until February 15. Then it became German when they took it in the 12th of February 15 until September 15. It is very important that we respect sites such as this. Ah, oh, this looks familiar. Back here again. So, if you have an interest in the First World War, such as I do, and decide to come and visit this incredible site, please respect it. I'm going to go over now in the direction of where I saw the Red Cross, which is now in front of me. Is that a footpath? Looks like one. It's an amazing view. You can see why this would be very important. Not so much my footing. Look for dugouts. some graves. Section of light railway, in fact more light railway down there. A little truck that was used for bringing up ammunition and supplies. And also take, uh, when they're doing excavations, bringing up materials. Now here we have our two big, quite big dugouts under the side of the hill, reinforced with steel. Looks like they were used as a dressing station. The stretcher. Now look at that there on the floor in front of me. The roll of barbed wire unused with a shell sticking out of it. It actually looks like that because of the hole there. That shell went straight in and didn't go off. A dud. Uh, at one time, 
uh, during the war, something like 30% of the shells fired were duds. Hmm. You hear read of many accounts a soldier or a dud landed next to them. And by the fact it was a dud, saved their life. Well, this is the end of my short video, just over 30 minutes. I hope it's been of interest to you. And I do want to stress that should you choose to visit this site, please respect it for what it is. It's not just holes in the ground. This is a battlefield. Young men from France and Germany came here and died. Respect it as their last resting place. And please do not remove anything from the site.